What I'm going to show you here is an interesting little bike lane down near Royal Perth Hospital, which is at the eastern end of the Perth CBD, kind of sleepy kind of part of town. And I knew this bike lane was here because a couple of days after I arrived in Perth and the, uh, the border got closed, I got a text from the police that I had to get tested and this was the closest place for me to come. So I walked down here and accidentally stumbled across the bike lane. When I did that, but I hadn't ridden it until this day, I think, I'm not sure. Regardless of that, here I am coming up towards the bike lane and you can see that on the road there's this great big symbol for drivers saying it's right turn only, but there's absolutely nothing here for cyclists to say there's actually a bike lane off there to the left. Uh, the, the only reason I knew there was a bike lane there is because I'd walked around there and there's this tiny little bicycles accepted sign underneath the no left turn arrow to give you some indication you can turn left here. And look, I saw this ramp here and thought, okay, I'll go up that ramp, cut across the corner here and get into the bike lane. And as we'll see later, I don't think that's what you're supposed to do, but well, there was nothing to tell me to do anything otherwise, so I did that. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty narrow lane. It's only about a meter wide. It's obviously one direction, not bi-directional. And there's a nice wide curb between you and the parked cars. Unfortunately uh, for everyone, you know, the cars come screaming up the street there from the left. You've got to be careful at that uh, particular intersection. But this is a quiet little street by the look of things. Um, bit of a blind corner there, obviously with tall parked vehicles like uh, four-wheel drives, etc. But otherwise, you know, it's... I know it looks narrow and horrible and all the rest of it, but I, I had no problems with it. I thought it was a fairly useful little piece of stuff. It doesn't have sharp, steep curbs on it, so if you need to ride out of it to get around some rubbish or, uh, uh, or glass or something, you can. You could just jump up over the curb on either side and you'll be alright. I think the biggest risk here would be having to look out for pedestrians just wandering across here. But as you can see, there's no big obstructions to sight lines. You could see someone coming out of a shop to the left, etc. Let's just have a look at it from the rear view. And this is what I was talking about when I jumped up over here. You can see as we go around the corner here that the lane does extend around to that stop sign. So what I was probably supposed to do is go to the stop sign, stop and then turn the corner. Well, that's my bad, but look, I'll blame the lack of signage and symbology on that one and uh, say it's not my fault. Uh, the good thing about going in the opposite direction to the parked cars is that if someone does park up on that curb and then they fling their door open, if you crash into the door, well, it's just going to slam straight into them and, uh, you know, you're probably going to come off your bike, but it's not as serious as opening, running into a car door when it's facing the other way. And I think because there's quite a bit of space there, even if someone did fling open a door, although it's a narrow lane, I think you'd be able to dodge around it. Unless, like I said, they'd you know, done something silly and actually parked on that kerb rather than next to that kerb. Uh, as you can see on the footpath, there's all sorts of uh, poles and planter boxes and seats and all the rest of it along here and p ticket parking machines and goodness knows well, and trees. Uh, but nothing big enough for a pedestrian to hide behind and jump out in front of you and surprise you as you're riding along here. I mean, look, it's not a fast lane. You know, it's one of these things you just tonk along at 20, 25 kilometres now. And if you look at the road, you can see there's a lot of brick paving used. So it's, it really is designed to slow down vehicle traffic as well. We've uh, run out of lane here, but again, it's still a slow street. And this is uh, just a fact of life in a lot of the Perth CBD. They've really re-engineered the streets to slow them down quite dramatically. People don't go tearing through the CBD or try to go tearing through it at 60 kilometres now. A lot of it is 30 kilometres now. And, and a lot of people drive at that speed because that's what it's been re-engineered to be. It's, it's really good. You can see going across in this, this intersection, it's, it's all brick. Brick is noisier. It automatically, uh, you know, reminds drivers uh, to slow down. And they use a lot of red asphalt in places, which is also like another visual indicator that this is a, a kind of a shared pedestrian area, and you need to slow down and uh, and pay attention. So I, I was hoping I'd actually have some video here to show you how you then get down to the river here, you know, because there's another lane around the corner. But stupidly, I actually deleted it, so we're kind of going to have to finish here. But uh, in summary, you know, that was just a, a short little lane, not very wide, doesn't take up a lot of space, but uh, a, a useful addition to the bicycle network. And it, you know, I think it just shows that you don't need something that's massive um, for it to actually be uh, useful, safe, convenient, 
um and you know ah just a nice place to ride.